In this lesson, we are going to study rational functions. What are rational functions? Rational functions are functions that can be written as a quotient of two polynomial functions. So in this case, p of x and q of x are polynomial functions. But of course, for this to be defined, the denominator, the polynomial q of x should not be equal to the zero polynomial. Here are the graphs of some examples of polynomial functions. This is the graph of the function 1 over x. This is the graph of the function 1 over x squared. In order to discuss the behavior of the graphs of rational functions, we have to discuss asymptotes. First, let us start with vertical asymptotes. Suppose that we have a rational function. And as x approaches some number c, the values of r of x become more and more positive or more or more negative. We say that the line x equals c is a vertical asymptote. So in this example, this is our c. And if you notice here, if you look at the graph from the left of c, let me take some of the points here. The x coordinates here are this this, this. So the x coordinates get closer and closer to c. But what happens to the y coordinates? The y coordinates, this is the y coordinate for this point, this is the y coordinate for this point, and so on. And that will continue. So the y coordinates here gets bigger and bigger. It becomes more and more positive. If we follow the graph from the right of C, for example, the x-coordinate of this point is this one. So notice that the x-coordinates here gets closer and closer to C. What happens to the y-coordinate? The y-coordinate of this point is this. The y-coordinate of this point is this, and so on and so forth. So if you continue this, what happens to the y-coordinates? The y-coordinates become more and more positive. So in this case, we say that as x approaches c, it means that as x becomes closer and closer to c, the y-coordinates approaches positive infinity because y gets bigger and bigger. Now, it could also happen that as x approaches c, y becomes more and more negative. So for example, in this case, if you follow the graph from the left of c, what happens to the y-coordinates? The y-coordinates here become more and more negative. So as x approaches c, okay, however, we're coming from the left of c, so we indicate that by negative sign there. We say that y approaches negative infinity. What about in this case over here? We are coming from the right of c. If we follow the graph from the right of c, what happens to the y-coordinates? Again, it becomes more and more positive. So for this graph over here, we say that as x approaches c from the right, your y coordinates approaches positive infinity because y gets bigger and bigger. So if you have this value of c over here, if this happens, at least one of these two scenarios happen, we say that this vertical line here, x equals c, is a vertical asymptote of the graph of r. Let us take a look at the two graphs that I have shown earlier. For the function 1 over x, what would be a vertical asymptote here? Look at your y-axis. So in this case, as x approaches, this is 0, right? As x approaches 0, your y approaches positive infinity it becomes bigger and bigger but it's coming we're coming from the right of zero and from here as x approaches zero but we're coming from the left of zero 
your y approaches negative infinity. Correct? So we say that x equals 0 is a vertical asymptote. It's actually the only vertical asymptote. What about for y equals 1 over x squared? Same thing is happening here. But in this case, in both directions, either from the left or from the right, the y coordinates gets bigger and bigger, right? So we say that as x approaches 0, y approaches positive infinity. So here, the y-axis or x equals 0 is a vertical asymptote as well. Here is another example of a rational function. Let us determine the vertical asymptote. This is the graph of x minus 2 all over x minus 3 times x plus 2. What would be the vertical asymptotes here? Take a look at this line over here. This line over here is a vertical asymptote. What else? This line over here as well. That is also a vertical asymptote. What is the equation of this line? It passes negative 2. The equation of a vertical line passing through negative 2, 0 is x equals negative 2. And for this one, it passes through 3, 0. This is x is equal to 3. But the problem is, how do we identify the vertical asymptotes of a rational function without plotting the graph? So we use this theorem. In locating the vertical asymptotes of a rational functions, first, we have to express it in lowest terms. Take note, the rational function should be in lowest terms. If it's already in lowest terms, the denominator, q of x, will determine the vertical asymptotes. How do we determine the vertical asymptotes? You just get the zeros of the denominator. So if we go back to our previous example, this rational function is in simplest form or in lowest terms already because there are no common factors. The denominators are x minus 3 and x plus 2. So when you set each of the denominators to 0, you will get the vertical asymptotes x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. Let's have some examples. Let us find the vertical asymptotes if there are any of the graph of each of these rational functions. So for number 1, x plus 3 over x minus 1, what would be the vertical asymptote? The vertical asymptote, just set the denominator to 0. So the vertical asymptote is x equals for number 2, our denominator is x squared minus 4, and we just set that to 0. What are the vertical asymptotes? This can be factored as x minus 2, x plus 2, so therefore the vertical asymptotes are x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. What about this one? x squared over x squared plus 1. Is there a value for which the denominator can be equal to 0? But this would mean that x squared equals negative 1. This one has no real solution. So since it has no real solution, it has no vertical asymptote. For number 4, this is not in lowest terms because we can still factor, correct? For the numerator, we have x minus 3, x plus 3. The denominator is x plus 7 times x minus 3. Notice that you can still simplify, correct? This is not yet in lowest terms. So you cancel x minus 3. But remember, when you cancel this, it means that x minus 3 should not be equal to 0. Or x is not equal to 3. Remember that whenever you are canceling a common factor, you have to make sure that factor is not equal to 0. So therefore, in lowest terms, this is x plus 3 over 
x plus 7. And hence, the vertical asymptote is just x equals negative 7. As a reminder, a vertical asymptote, if we have one, describes the behavior of the graph when x is close to some number c and the graph will never intersect a vertical asymptote. Meaning to say, you can never have something like this. This is a, let's say, vertical asymptote. And then, like that. This cannot happen. Why? Because in the first place, this one would not be a function. It fails the vertical line test, correct? So whenever you have a vertical asymptote, it's either you have this, something like this, something like this, or this, or this could happen. You can never intersect your vertical asymptote. Next, let us discuss horizontal asymptotes. Again, we have a rational function r here. Suppose that as x approaches infinity, what does this mean? x approaches infinity means that x becomes more and more positive. Alright, so meaning to say you are following the graph going to the right. Okay. When x becomes more and more positive, what happens to the values of r of x? Take note that r of x is your y coordinate for the function because the function is y equals r of x. When the values of y approach some fixed number l, we say that the line y equals l is a horizontal asymptote. So for example, this graph over here, as x becomes more and more positive, Look at that one. If we follow the graph, what is the y-coordinate of this one? It's this one. It's this one. It's this one. And so on. So what happens to the y-coordinates? They get closer and closer to a fixed number L. For this case, your x becomes more and more negative. So for the second case, you have x approaches negative infinity. This means that x becomes more and more negative. So look at this one. If you follow these points over here in the graph, the x-coordinate of this is this, 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 and this, and so on. So you move away from the origin. You're going to the left. So that's why your x becomes more and more negative. What happens to the y-coordinates? For this point, the y-coordinate is this, 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 this and so on. So as you move the point here, your x approaches negative infinity, but your y coordinates approaches L. All right. So if you have that number L, that is how your graph will look like. Then we have a horizontal asymptote. Recall that the equation of a horizontal line is y equals something. So let us identify the horizontal asymptotes for y equals 1 over x. Look at this part over here. You have the x-axis as the horizontal asymptote. And what is the equation of that line? That is y equals 0. Same is true for the function 1 over x squared. You have a horizontal asymptote here. The horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. Here's another example. Let us identify the horizontal asymptote. Notice this one. As x approaches positive infinity and as x approaches negative infinity, it gets closer and closer to... But the y-coordinate gets closer and closer to 2. So the horizontal asymptote for this graph is y equals 2. Take note that a horizontal asymptote, when it occurs, describes the end behavior of the graph. This is the end, right? The left part and the right part of the graph. And the graph of a function may intersect a horizontal asymptote. Recall earlier that for a vertical asymptote, you cannot intersect it. You cannot intersect a vertical asymptote. This cannot happen. But for a horizontal asymptote, it's possible to intersect it. For example, I have this 
horizontal asymptote and my graph is something like this. So this is my horizontal asymptote. I intersected it here, but remember that the horizontal asymptote will describe the end behavior. We are only concerned on the end behavior since on the right part of the graph, your y coordinates approaches this particular value, let's call that L, this is already qualified as a horizontal asymptote. How do we find the horizontal asymptotes of rational functions? This theorem will be helpful. When the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, automatically the horizontal asymptote is the x-axis or y is equal to zero. If the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator, the horizontal asymptote will just be the quotient of the leading coefficient of the numerator all over the leading coefficient of the denominator. When the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator, there is no horizontal asymptote. Let's have some examples. Number one, let us find the horizontal asymptote of f of x. Take note that this one has degree 1, denominator has degree 2. So therefore, using this result, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. For this one, they have the same degree. Therefore, what is the horizontal asymptote? You just set y is equal to what is the leading coefficient in the numerator? That's 3. All over the leading coefficient in your denominator is 1. So therefore, y equals 3 is your horizontal asymptote. Let us talk about oblique asymptotes. For oblique asymptotes, we are also going to look at the end behavior of the graph. So for example, here, we're looking at the right side of the graph, the end part. So as x approaches positive infinity, as x becomes more and more positive, your y coordinates get closer and closer to this line. So let us suppose that the equation of this line is y equals ax plus b. We say that this is an oblique asymptote of r. So here is an example of a graph. This is my function f of x. Notice here I have an oblique asymptote of y equals 3x plus 3. If we will look at the end behavior of the graph on the left, it approaches this line y equals 3x plus 3. And therefore, this is your oblique asymptote. How do we locate oblique asymptotes? Oblique asymptotes can only happen when the degree of the numerator is just equal to 1 more than the degree of the denominator. And how do we get it? We can get it by dividing the numerator with your denominator. The resulting quotient will be your oblique asymptote. So for example, let us find the oblique asymptote of this function over here. Take note that the degree of the numerator is 1 more than the degree of the denominator. This one has degree 2. This one has degree 1. So therefore, for the oblique asymptote, you just have to divide the numerator by the denominator. First term divided by first term is 2x. 2x times 4x minus 1 is 8x squared minus 2x. Subtract, we get 26x minus negative 2x is 28x minus 8. First term divided by first term, so that's 7. So we get 28x minus 7. So when we subtract again, 
we get negative 1. Now, remember that we are only concerned with the quotient. The oblique asymptote is just the quotient y equals 2x plus 7. So I have here the graph of the function. Let us verify the oblique asymptote that we obtained. This blue line is the graph of y equals 2x plus 7. So if we zoom out, notice that one. On the left and on the right side, the end behavior, it really approaches this line. Now suppose instead that I change this to 7 instead of 8. If you look at this one earlier, if this one is 7, the remainder here is going to be 0. Which means that this expression in lowest terms is 2x plus 7. We can verify that because the numerator actually has a factor of 4x minus 1. So it will be cancelled out. 4x minus 1. This is 2x plus 7 all over 4x minus 1. So 4x minus 1 gets cancelled out. But then again, when you cancel this, this means that 4x minus 1 cannot be equal to 0. So x is not equal to 1 fourth. Is 2x plus 7 still an oblique asymptote? No, this one has no oblique asymptote. Because the graph is actually just a line. f of x in lowest terms is just 2x plus 7, but x not equal to 1 fourth. What is the graph of 2x plus 7? That is just a line. And since you have x not equal to 1 fourth, this means that you have a hole at 1 fourth. This means... To graph the line 2x plus 7, the y-intercept is 7. And with x-intercept of negative 7 over 2. So we connect these points. However, you have a hole at x equals 1 fourth. When you substitute it at 2x plus 7, your y is 2 times 1 fourth plus 7, so that's 7.5. So let us assume that this is my 1 fourth. My hole will appear somewhere here. So it's just the line y equals 2x plus 7 with a hole there that's indicated by x not equal to one fourth. The whole is one fourth seven point five. Let us use the graph to find the following properties. What would be the domain and range? What is the domain of this graph? For the domain, what you can do is just look at the x coordinates and what can you cover in the x-axis. So I'm just projecting everything to the x-axis, but take note that this one will continue. So notice here that I was able to cover everything on the x-axis, right? That's indicated by the green part, except that I do not have a point with x-coordinate here at the vertical asymptote. And what is this? This is so the domain would be the set of all real numbers except 2. Or you can also write it as negative infinity to 2 because you do not want to union to 2 infinity. What about the range? For the range, you are projecting the graph on the y-axis. Y coordinate of this is this. And then just see what will be covered in the Y axis. So what were covered on the Y axis? Notice that we were able to cover this one. 
and this one, correct? And that will continue. That will continue. Except that you have a horizontal asymptote here. And the graph did not intersect that. So therefore here you have no point with y coordinate equal to 1. So therefore the range is a set of all real numbers except 1. You can also write it as negative infinity 1 union 1 to infinity. There I cleaned up our graph a little bit. The green part indicates the domain and the yellow part indicates the range. Again, for the domain, you're just looking at all the x coordinates. See this one? So that's why you were covering everything on the x axis except when x equals 2. You have no point with x coordinate equal to 2. All right? And for the range, you are projecting everything to the y axis. So you were able to cover everything on the y axis except at the horizontal asymptote. You do not have any point with y coordinate equal to 1. For our x intercepts, what will be our x intercepts? It's only this point. This is the only x intercept. x intercept we have x equals 0 and y intercept y equals 0. What about our vertical asymptote? This is our vertical asymptote and what's the equation of a vertical line? x equals 2. For horizontal asymptote, this is y equals 1 and there are no oblique asymptotes. Next, domain and range. Let us start with the domain again. If you project everything on the x-axis, what would be the x-coordinates of this? It's from this up to this, correct? This part here, when I project it on the x-axis, it's this part. What are the x coordinates of this graph here when you project it along the x axis? It's this part. And for this part, what are the x coordinates? It's this part. Except that you will have holes where you have a vertical asymptote here. The graph did not intersect that. You also have a vertical asymptote here, there. So therefore, what is this? That's negative 2 and 2. So our domain, I'll just use the shorter notation, all real numbers except negative 2 and 2. What about for the range? For this part first, what are the y coordinates here? The y coordinates here are from 1 up to infinity, correct? But 1 is not included. So I have a hole here. For this part, the y coordinates will also be this part. So we're done with 1, 2. For the last part, what are the y coordinates? When you project it on the y axis, it's starting from 0 up to negative infinity. And 0 is included. For the range, let us now look at the y axis. Let us start with this part. What is this? This is 0 to negative infinity. Or in interval notation, negative infinity up to 0, but 0 is included. Union, this part over here is, we're starting at 1 with 1 not included up to positive infinity. What would be our intercepts? Our y-intercept, we intersected the y-axis at y equals 0 at the origin. And that is also where we intersected the x-axis. For our vertical asymptotes, it would be these two lines. What is that? That is x equals negative 2 for this one. And this one here is x equals 2. For our horizontal asymptote, it's this line. 
and that's 1. So therefore, that is y equals 1. Again, no oblique asymptotes. Let us look at this graph. There are two parts in your graph, this part and this part. First, let us get the x-coordinates of this part over here. When you project it on the x-axis, what are the x-coordinates? It's from, take a look at that, That's that will continue there, right? So what would be the x-coordinates? It's starting from 0 up to negative infinity because this one will still continue. But we have a hole at x equals 0. Alright, because the graph will not intersect x equals 0. Look at this one. You have a vertical asymptote there. So that's why you know that the graph will not intersect x equals 0. So this is a hole. For this part over here, what will be the x-coordinates? When you project it on the x-axis, you get everything here. Right? Again, 0 is not included. So therefore, our domain is all reals except 0. What about for our range? If you look at this graph, what are the y-coordinates here? You're starting at 2 correct and then going up the y coordinates are all greater than or equal to 2 this is included 2 for this one the y coordinates are starting at negative 2 and then going down therefore our range is composed of this 2 here this one is negative infinity up to negative 2 Negative 2 is included because look at this one. You have a point with y coordinate equal to negative 2. Union starting at 2 going up. So that's 2 up to infinity. Do you have any intercepts? Look at your x-axis. The graph did not intersect the x-axis. And the graph did not intersect the y-axis as well. So it's none. For vertical asymptotes, what would be our vertical asymptotes? This one, the y-axis or x equals 0. We do not have any horizontal asymptote, but we do have oblique asymptotes. This one. What would be the equation of this line? Take note that your line passes through 0, 0. So it has a slope of, what is the slope? If you use the formula, that's rise over run. So that's 1 minus 0 all over negative 1 minus 0. That's negative 1. And the y-intercept of this line is 0. So therefore, this the line y equals negative x. In our three examples, we were given the graph of a function and we were supposed to find this. For our last example, we are just given the equation of the function and we have to look for all of this. Let us start. For the first function, for our domain, how do you get the domain? You just make sure that the denominator is not equal to 0. So hence, x should not be equal to 4. We can write it as r, take away 4. Take note that I only ask you to get the domain of the function since we're only given the equation of the graph. I will teach you on a later video lecture how to get the range of a function if we're just given its equation. Next, let us look for the intercepts. For the x-intercept, how do you get the x-intercept when the function is equal to 0? But a rational function will only be equal to 0 when its numerator is equal to 0. So remember that. You get the x-intercept from the numerator. So we have 3x plus 4 equals 0. And therefore, x is equal to negative 4 thirds. What about the y-intercept? For the y-intercept, you set x to 0. 
just like as before. So what is y when x is equal to 0? We get 4 over negative 4 or negative 1. Next, vertical asymptotes. How do we get the vertical asymptotes? We just set the denominator to 0. This is in lowest term, so we can easily set x minus 4 to 0. And therefore, the vertical asymptote is x equals 4. What about our horizontal asymptote? The degree of your numerator and the denominator are equal. And therefore, the vertical asymptote is just the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator. So we get y equals 3. We do not have oblique asymptotes because oblique asymptotes only happen when the degree of the numerator is 1 more than the degree of the denominator. Next, g of x equals this function. First, let us factor and see whether we can still express this in lowest terms. Make sure that you always factor your numerator and denominator. So for the numerator, this can be factored as x plus 1, x plus 5. Our denominator can be factored as... 2x plus 5 times x plus 1. And therefore, you can cancel x plus 1, but do not forget x not equal to negative 1. So now, you will just look at the lowest terms. We have x plus 5 over 2x plus 5 with x not equal to negative 1. Now, what will be your domain? You already indicated here that x is not equal to negative 1. Of course, the denominator 2x plus 5 should not be equal to 0 as well. So that's why you have not equal to negative 5 halves. For our intercepts, you get the x-intercept from the numerator. So from the numerator, x plus 5 is equal to 0, hence x is equal to negative 5. For the y-intercept, set x to 0, and therefore your y is equal to 5 over 5, or 1. For the vertical asymptote, where do we get that? From the denominator. You just set the denominator to 0. And therefore, we get that x is equal to negative 5 halves. So as you notice here, once you have your rational function in factored form, setting the numerator to 0 will give you your x-intercept, and setting your denominator to 0 will give you your vertical asymptote. Do not forget that. What about for horizontal asymptote? Just like in the previous example, the degrees of the numerator and the denominator are equal. And therefore, our horizontal asymptote is just the quotient of the leading coefficient. So it's 1 over 2. And if we already have a horizontal asymptote, of course, we have no oblique asymptote. Lastly, let us do this for h of x. The first step is to always factor x cubed minus 8 in factored form. That is x minus 2. This is x squared plus 2x plus 4. Difference of two cubes, do not forget that. And x squared minus 5x plus 6 is x minus 2, x minus 3. Hence, you can cancel x minus 2, but make sure that x is not equal to 2. Let's write this in simplest form. We have x squared plus 2x plus 4 all over x minus 3. 
x not equal to 2. Let us start with our domain. For our domain, you already have x not equal to 2 here. And your denominator, x minus 3, should not be equal to 0 as well. So x should not be equal to 3. For the intercepts, for the x-intercept, set the numerator to 0. x squared plus 2x plus 4 is not factorable. But before we even use the quadratic equation, let us see first if this one has real solutions. Let us compute its discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. That is 4 minus 4 times 1 times 4, which is negative, which means that we have no real solution for this equation, which means that we have no x-intercept. We will not intersect the x-axis. For the y-intercept, set x to 0, so we're left with... 4 over negative 3, or negative 4 thirds. Lastly, for our asymptotes, vertical asymptote, you just set denominator to 0. So we get that x is equal to 3. Do we have a horizontal asymptote? No, because the degree of the numerator is 1 more than the degree of the denominator. So we have no horizontal asymptote, but we do have an oblique asymptote. The degree of the numerator is the degree of the denominator plus 1. And therefore, we simply divide the numerator by the denominator. This will give us x we're only concerned with the quotient so our oblique asymptote is y equals x plus 5